This video mainly focuses on secondary auxiliary view. Secondary auxiliary view is just used when we have an oblique surface on the given object. If we have a surface just like this having the oblique surface, we don't have an exact size and shape on either of the six principal plane. So to get the exact size and shape of this surface, we have to use a secondary auxiliary view and then I will show you all the basic steps to construct it. To easily identify the corner points of the surface, let's level with a letter from A up to G here. So all the points will be this one. If you look this 3D object, it will have a multi-view drain like this. This one is a front view and then this one is a right side view. We are using a third angle projection system. Once we have this, this surface is an oblique surface. That means it will have a distorted view on three principal views. On the front view, on the side view, and then on the top view, it will have a distorted layout. If such types of surfaces are there, we call it as an oblique surface. You might refer the video related to the projections of oblique plane. You can get the link on the video description. Some of the edges of this oblique surface will have a true length on the view. If the layout of the oblique surface is an inclined line, that will be a true length. If you look over here, from the front view, these three lines are with a true length. And then from the right side view, these two lines will be with a true length. The first step to construct the secondary auxiliary view is just identifying the true length. And then from that true length, we can extend a line which is a collinear line with that line. In this case, we can use this line, line AB. This is because of we have a space to construct the auxiliary view on this portion. You can also use the other inclined lines and then at the same time you can use even the front view or the side view. It will be just based on your space to construct the secondary auxiliary view. Make sure that all points are properly leveled with these letters on both views. Now the next step will be we can project a parallel line which starts from each point. Now from point C, D, E, F, and G, we can construct a parallel line which is parallel to line AB in this case. So if you just look here, point A and point B are aligned on the same line. At the same thing, point D and point E will be aligned on the same line here. In this case, the two lines are parallel to each other. Now at a proper distance, we can construct the second reference plane line here that is just for the auxiliary plane line if it is too far then the view will be out of your working place and then if it is too near it will overlap with your views so make sure that you put this part on the proper place don't forget that this reference line is perpendicular to the previous extended line now we can measure from reference one into the front view and then we can transfer the dimensions into the auxiliary plane if we measure from this reference to point A, we'll get this measurement. And then the same thing from here to here, if we measure that, we'll get the dimensions of point B. In this case, point A and point B are on the same distance. And then the same thing, they will be aligned on the same line, on the lower extension line here. So at that point, we'll have this point. So this point is the positions of point A and point B. And then the next one is, we can measure from this reference to point C. If you measure that dimension, you'll get this length, and then you can transfer this into this one by using the reference point 2. So this point C will be placed over here. And then the other one, from here to here, you can measure, and then you'll get the positions of point D. At the same thing, if you measure this one, from here to here, point A will be located over this. In this case, point D and point E are on the same line. At the same thing, they will be placed on the same point, because they have the same dimension from reference one. And the next thing is you'll measure from here to here and then you'll get point F. If you get that one and then from here to here you'll measure and then you'll get point G. And then from here to here it will be point G. Once you measure all the pointers then you can connect them. The line will be a straight line. Sometimes those lines may not be placed on the exact position because of the error that generates during the measurement. So to avoid that, we can measure the smallest distance and the largest distance. The smallest distance is from the reference one to point A or point B. So you'll measure that point. And then once you get the points of A and B, 
then you will measure the largest distance. In this case, the largest distance from the reference is with point C. So you will get point C. Once you get point A and then point C, you can connect a straight line. And then once you do that, the remaining points will be on this line. So you can place point D and E at this position, and then you can place point G at this position. So once you understand all the things related to that, you'll get this edge view with a straight line. That means if you just look the view which is perpendicular to line AB. Now the next step is we can construct a perpendicular line for this edge view from each point. And then once you construct the perpendicular line, those lines will be either off in the right direction or in the left direction. It will be depend on the space you have to construct that auxiliary view. In this case, we have the space on the right side. So we'll just project those lines into the right side. In this case, from the reference one, we have already completed on the front view, so we don't need it. The next step will be, we'll construct a reference three. So this reference three is parallel to this edge view. It can be placed on the appropriate position. It will be depend on just the space you have to construct it. The remaining thing is just transfer the dimensions of each point from reference two into reference three. So let's just transfer that. If you measure from reference two to point A of the right side view, you will get this dimension. So with this magnitude, you can transfer it into this place. And then finally point A will be here. Same thing, point B can be placed from here to here. And then finally you will get the locations of point B over there. And then once you get all this, you will transfer the remaining points. In this case, let's transfer from here to here into point C. So from here to here is just the dimension of point C, you can transfer that one. Don't forget that point C will be just placed by following this line. And then the other one, if you measure from here to here, you will get the dimensions of point D. So the dimensions of point D will be this one. And then you will measure the same thing with point E from here to here, and then you'll transfer that dimension, you'll get that point. And then from here to here, it will be just point F, and then you can transfer that dimension. And then the last one is from here to here, you'll get the positions of point G. Once you get all those pointers, the remaining thing will be connect them by starting from point A into point G. So from point A to point B, then from B to C, from C to D, E, F, G, and then finally we will connect point G and point A. At the end, we can get the exact size or a true views of the given surface by using a secondary auxiliary view for the oblique surface. If you have a space on the left portion, you can also place this object at this position. If you look this one, it is just a mirror of the previous object. You can use the same procedure to construct it. So this is the end of the video, which is related to the secondary auxiliary view. If you enjoyed the video, you might like, share, and then subscribe our channel too. So see you soon.